Okay, today we are going to do a few Boston butts. We're going to introduce some flavor profiles, some competition flavor profiles uh, that we know is, you know, currently being used on the circuit quite often. And uh, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be Cimarron Dock and Butcher Barbecue on these big old Boston butts. Now, Boston butts uh, were really the piece of meat that most of the roll they didn't want back in the day. And, and when uh, they were up in Boston, they box up some huge old uh, uh, barrels of uh, pork and send them over on the ship. And the Boston butt was always on the back with a lot bottom with a lot of salt on it. So uh, rich people didn't want it, but it's turned out to be one of the best piece of pork. Here we go. Okay, uh, what we got today is Smithfield. Smithfield usually is a prehydrated butt. Uh, really great quality. Uh, that's one reason why I got Smithfield for this demonstration today, because I tell you, man, uh, it helps to start off with some good meat. Now, IBP is the best Boston butt in the business, but uh, Smithfield's not too bad, so we're going to use it today and uh, see what we can do, make it look good. Now what we have here is a two butt pack. And I've seen some people just get the injector and inject right through the plastic. You know, if you think about it, if you inject through the plastic, you can't get a better seal on keeping all those juices and stuff in. Uh, uh, of course, we're not gonna do that. We're introducing four different flavor profiles so they can't all be in the same bag. Uh, you know, you got your people out there who uh, say that you know, they don't trim them at all. Uh, and, you know, I don't know if it makes a whole lot of difference, but I like to trim as much as I want to to really make those Boston butts cook up good and do good. Now, of course, this here's your money muscle right here. Uh, it's opposite the bone right there in the back. And uh, I don't know, it's got a little fat right there. I can't really see how good the money muscle is. It, it's not exactly sticking out real good, but let's get this knife here. See if we can find some more of that money muscle. They, I, think, I think what it is, they left uh, a little more on the top. This is a thicker butt on the top. If it had cut it thinner, the money muscle would have stuck out uh, further. Let's take this piece off. Let's see. Now, uh, folks, we ain't gonna waste any of our any of our pork. You know, I'm gonna put it in here. We'll cook it in the cooker. Nothing else. Molly, my dog, can eat it. But some people, when they do a barbecue competition, have a theory: if you get the money muscle and you trim it out a little bit where it's a little bit separated you get more bark all the way around when you do them competition boxes uh, more bark you know makes it look better in the box so we'll do this one that way you know I got to get out the big Frederick Dick from 125west.com uh, big knives is what you need when you're trimming Boston butts now some people will just Get the top edge of this Boston butt. And folks, you got to have a sharp knife to do what I'm getting ready to do. And they'll just go ahead and trim off the top half inch of the whole butt. Look at there. So there's nothing but beautiful pork meat right there across the top. We'll save that. Now, I just got rid of a whole bunch of membranes and problems just by coming across the top of it like that. And then you got this two-fold section here in between uh, the front and the back of the Boston butt and it's, it's full of membranes <coughs> so we'll we'll work this knife in here and we'll now this this thins it down thins the Boston butt down you don't want to take all the fat off because you need fat for marbling uh, for flavor but uh, let's see if we can get this big Frederick Dick in here and just take this membrane off Look at there, that wasn't a whole lot of fighting. I tell you, a big knife, is, is that's one of the main things you need. Uh, it's a great big old knife to 
go in there and work that butt over. Now, some people don't touch the fat cap. Some people just take a little bit off. I tell you what, I think I'm gonna come in here for exercise today. You know, we're gonna have it in uh, tinfoil after we get it started on the Meadow Creek cooker. Oh, uh, shoot, let's just, let's see what happens. Let's take some of it off, heck. I've always wanted to do a Boston butt with practically no cat cap, because I tell you, when you go to take it out, then uh, you have to get that fat separated from the rest of the uh, <coughs> Boston butt before you serve it, and, which you don't take but a second, but <coughs> let's try it without it. Because we're going to put that, <coughs> we're going to put that good old butcher barbecue pork injection on this butt. And then the butcher barbecue rub. And I want to give it as much access to the meat just so we can see how the butcher barbecue. I'm going to square this whole end up. Just square it up. Look at there. That's a lot of problems and aggravation gone. Uh, well, let's see. Now, see, I sort of did it the quick method by going long strokes. and uh, That's just a hunk of fat. Let's go ahead and get that off of there. Let's try this one. All right, well, we got a little bit of membrane across the top here. The fat cap's gone. You got about four eyes in the back. There's some, there's like two eyes in here, one there, one there. Uh, those eyes there make some nice uh, pork when you start serving so we'll make sure we don't get down in those eyes uh, well, I don't know looking pretty good well now this is gonna make it harder to inject because it's sort of in pieces now but we're still gonna inject it and we're gonna do butcher pork injection Okay, we're going to get our butcher pork injection. Oh, there it is. Mixing directions for a seven pound pork buck combine three quarter cup of injection with two cups of water and mix well. Inject small amounts throughout the butt by using a grid pattern and trying to keep the injection into the center of the meat. For best results, set for four hours before cooking. For more details, visit our facts page and website, www.butcherbarbecue.com. After mixing, refrigerate till used. Okay. We don't have to use apple juice, we gotta use water. Okay. We're going to put three quarter cup of injection in our cup right here. And uh, three quarter cup of injection. Uh, that's it. Okay, folks, we got a three-quarter cup of injection here. And look what it looks like. It's a powder like cornstarch. Real meaty. All right. Okay, now. 
two cups of water. Okay, we got us a two cup mushroom thing right here, so we're going to put 16 ounces in there. 16 ounces of water is two cups of water. Yeah, exactly two cups. How about that? Okay. Yeah, we're going to take our two cups of water right here. And we're going to pour it right in here on this injection. Get this boy, I tell you, I can smell some meaty flavor immediately. Now the water was room temperature. They told somebody told me that you can't mix uh, injection cold water. It's got to be room temperature water. your barbecue pork injection. Got a little yellow to it. Look at, look at how it flows out of the... Take about a second, man. Did it mix good? Look at there. There is not one anything. It's all pure injection. What do you think about that? Okay. All right, well. Pull our boss and put it back up here. To me, it didn't seem like I took much off the Boston butt, but it looks like there's a definite difference there. Now, Butcher sent me this injector himself. I guess it comes when you when you uh, buy from him. It's pretty nice. It's a veterinarian 14 gauge, two inch needle and a 60 milliliter syringe. They probably use it on cattle and stuff. That's a heck of a needle. That's, that's a nice that's a nice injector. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm gonna be using this thing today on these butts. If you got an injector out there, you, you want to try to sell, you want me to put it on the show, all you gotta do is send it to us. 
email me at bbqsuperstars at gmail.com all right well let's suck up our well let's go and let's wait we're gonna wait six hours we're gonna wait four hours and put it in the refrigerator Okay, no, we need to let the Boston butt set for four hours. I guess we can go ahead and inject. I yeah, might have filled it too full. Well, what you want to do is do a grid pattern. Uh, let's start right here with the bunny muscle. You know, I might have filled my injector too full, but I want to put just a little, see how it'll raise up look at all that flavor going in there look at that thing wow there's a thickness to this injection that's just wonderful look at there here's the money part of the board bottle watch it why don't you just, whoa. <laughs> wow. And ain't that beautiful? Now, I've seen some people at the injection site, they'll put their finger there. But it's not coming out. It's not coming back out. I mean, it's staying in right in there. A lot of people say try not to uh, stick the needle all the way through because when you pull it back it'll all leak out the other side. So try to, ooh look at that blow up. Oh look at that piece of meat. Beautiful and uh, it is running out. Hold it for a second it'll heal. And it won't run back out. Of course, I put a lot in there. Look at that money muscle. Oop. <laughs> it's just coming out mother holes. Okay, we're going to turn it over. I'm going to inject from the top, too. Some people say don't. They want you to inject in a grid so you can get every corner of it. But you can see the meat jumping up. <laughs> Look at that Boston butt blowing up. Boy, that's amazing. Whoa, the whole end of it's blowing up. Oh, I got air. Oop. This end here's a lot tougher. Still blowing up. Look at it blowing up there. This is essentially two cups of injection. Man, 
that's a nice one. Okay, now I'm going to save the rest of our injection to go inside our uh, marinade bag, which is, of course, the Ziploc bag. And uh, there's a little bit <coughs> of injection left that we're going to put inside the marinated bag. And of course, uh, you know, a lot of you know that I say Ziploc bags are a regular part of the marinating process. Uh, and they're, a, they're another tool in the process of uh, making barbecue. So we're going to get our three gallon bag out. We're going to put this one in. We're going to have to separate each one of our Boston butts because each one of them is going to have a different flavor profile. Butcher Barbecue. Absolutely one of the top brands and top names in injection, rub, and sauce. And a lot of people are winning grand champions today using Butcher Barbecue mixed with other sauces. So make sure you check out Butcher Barbecue first when it comes to pork and brisket. Butcher made all three of these as a team to pull together, folks. So make sure you get all three and keep the team in one piece. <clears throat> okay, if you notice, I did not put my rub on. And the reason is, is I'm going to wait 30 minutes before I put it on the cooker to put my rub on. Because depending on the salt content, which I'm not going to say that, you know, Butcher's got a lot of salt in his rub. You know, I don't know that. But I'm going to try it so it won't draw the moisture out of that butt before we put it on our Meadow Creek cooker. <clears throat> okay. And that, whoop. And I want to take the rest of my injection and pour it in on top of my butt. Okay, butcher barbecue. There's our first Boston bug trap. Okay, our next prep. these four preps you know I want you to decide which one you like the best uh, I'm gonna try to do four different ways and uh, then you try to choose which one you like okay the next prep we're gonna do and I've never used this before It's sweet Q smoke. Sweet smoke Q. Sweet smoke Q.
Okay, Sweet Smoke Q is the next injection we're going to use. Uh, now this is a two to one uh, ratio, so we're going to put one whole bottle put one whole bottle in our pan. Now when it comes to injections, it's about how it runs out. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. The reason I'm going to use a whole bottle, I'm supposed to use two bottles of apple juice with it. It's a two to one. We're going to come in here with our apple juice and Ooh, that smells good. Man, that boy might be on to something right there. Sweet Smoke Q, straight out of the FBA. Some of the best stuff you could put in port in the whole business. 25 of the top 100 teams in the United States are right down in the FBA, so these boys know how to cook, and they know what they're doing. Get some Sweet Smoke Q. Okay, we're going to dump our, well, I'm going to put the cap on it. I'm going to rinse it out. And we're going to dump our first one in there. Now I'm going to try to make sure this bottle is clean enough to put water in by the time we get done. Now I'm going I'm to inject two Boston Bucks with this because I don't have any other form of injection. I want to save my butcher barbecue sauce and butcher uh, pork injection because you know that stuff's good. And uh, we'll do a prep later, another prep with it. Okay, shake it up. Man, look at that. Now that bottle is clean. Now, okay, look at there. Man, you know I got all the juice and all the good out of that thing. It's just as clean as the day they put the original stuff in it. I'm going to save that bottle. Okay, now let's get our other one so we don't mix flavors. Let's take a look at what this looks like. How it flows, very liquidy. Man, you ain't gonna worry about mixing that. Yeah, that's some good flowing stuff. Well. Meadow Creek makes a top-notch cooker. Folks, when you need to cook some big-time barbecue, make sure you check on Meadow Creek. Okay, for this one. For test purposes. We're not going to trim it at all. I'm not going to even lay a knife on this one. This one, we're just going to inject and rub. And then when we get done cooking, let's see what the difference is. Because there's a school of thought out there that says you don't have to uh, rub them at all. And uh, I don't know about that. I'm not going to say that's a good idea. But... Uh, I 
Okay, here we go. Pull up in the syringe, nice. Look at that, no problems, no grains. Uh, let's start off with, turn it over and start off with the money muscle like we, no, let's start off on this side with the money muscle. <clears throat> oh, look at that thing blow up. I put a lot of injection in the money muscle. Just want to make sure the needle goes up, doesn't go down and go all the way through the fat cap because if it does, you know, a lot of people say inject at an angle. Man, look at that little thing blow up. Seems to be doing pretty good. Good injection, it's not hanging up in the needle. Got good color to it, got a nice red color to it. A little harder to pull up in the syringe than butchers was. Try to get a good shot of this. This is down around the bone. You've already got a lot of flavoring around the bone. I'm going to add some more. With Sweet Smoke Q. Team out of FBA. And the uh, Big Papa's battle at barbecue junction he was the one that brought all the vodka drinks to us nice fella okay Man, look at that beautiful piece of meat. Now the fat cap part, we're not gonna mess with. Uh, let's, for our purposes here right now, let's just say the fat cap is gonna hold some of that injection in. So we'll do it that way this time. Okay, our big first big flavor profile, Cimarron Doc Gourmet. If you just knew how many KCBS, SBN, MBN, FBA, SCBA, NEBS, all these different sanctioning bodies that are using Cimarron Docs. And we want to see how 
it works on this uh, boxing butt right here right now and uh, I hate to bust it open because it's such a beautiful bottle I made sure I washed my hands off good just now before I touched it because I want to save the bottle uh, but uh, industry standard wise Cimarron dock is about good as it gets now look at that red uh, color whoo man that's a little red gold going on there right there <laughs> and I hate to I hate to use this stuff you know you can't do any more than doing a video but Cimarron docks is beautiful flavor and color man that smell that magic smell when it comes out of the shaker is just unbelievable Man, now I'm not gonna rub it. Some people say you ought to rub it. And if you notice, I'm putting it on before I let it set because uh, I want it to soak in and uh, see how it does. Now, one thing you got to check when you're doing your boss to bust is bones. Make sure you get all the extra bone flakes and stuff off of it uh, before you start trimming it and cooking it. little Cimarron dock going on here. Man, you know with all that smoke, sweet smoke Q injection I just put on there. Now this is where you want to lay lay the rub on. You know. That's an important place right there. On your fat cap, I mean it's going to get gonna get knocked off when you get ready to start serving it so but you might make some bark you know you never can't discredit discount uh, where favor flavor will come from I mean you never know you know Whew, man look at this Cimarron dock baby folks you got to get yourself some Cimarron dock for your summer cookouts you know if you, if you don't get it all you're doing is lowering your standards Right on the money muscle there. I was thinking about putting a little buzz's butt dust. I mean, a uh, little uh, uh, I was thinking about putting a little uh, fireman's butt rub on top of that too. But that Cimarron dock has got it looking so good. I don't want to change the color of it. That's going to be a pretty butt. We go to cooking that thing right there. That's going to make some beautiful bark, beautiful barbecue. You know what? I did the whole butt. I didn't hardly use anything out of the shaker. That's a big old shaker, boy. One and a half pounds. Be able to do a lot of meat with that. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put this one up. in here and let it get in our Ziploc bag tool and let it marinate rub is a dry marinade you got liquid marinades you got dry marinades they're both marinades this right here is a dry marinade your butt number two Cimarron Doc Sweet Smoke Q Look at that. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right, we're going to put this one in the marinade. Let it set for about four hours. I'm not going to put any juice in this one because uh, I want that. I don't want to wash that Cimarron dock off of there. I'm just going to let this one set. I think that's going to be our best looking butt when we get done. Ziploc bags, an important part of barbecue. Just like rubs and marinades, make sure you marinate your barbecue in Ziploc bags. Okay, now it's smoking coals and buzzes bust dust, buzzes butt dust time. We're going to use those right now and uh, we're going to put them on this next set 
uh, Smithfield Boston butts we're gonna do and uh, that little light just works good on stuff like this watch out you know I'm cutting them butts just like I cut them ribs on the uh, the television show I did my goodness this little knife's dangerous okay so now we're going to do an in-between trim. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to do a fired and wired trim. I'll tell you what, let's do a fired and wired trim. To start off with, fired and wired is a Florida barbecue team, which I love. That's some good fellas. They're a lot of fun. They have a good time of contest. And, uh, fired and wired come in here with a big knife now the rule of the barbecue contest is that you cannot uh, cut the Boston butt completely in half it all has to be one piece when it's cooked so they'll come in here on a Boston butt Okay, they'll leave the money muscle in the middle. And now cut the Boston in butt half like this. Now I'm not saying you ought to do this to the competition team, I'm saying this is what they do. They'll leave the money muscle holding it. That's that's to the money muscle right there. Now open their Boston butt up like this. And what it does, it gives you twice as much surface area to put your rub on. So we're going to come in here and uh, we're going to come in here and put buzz and butt dust all over this thing. And that's that's a plenty enough there to do a couple Boston butts. And, uh, you know, when you Got a good rub, you need a good shaker. That Cimarron dock was a good shaker. So here's a good shaker. You can buy a good shaker. Shane Draper's got them. If you look around on the internet, some of these people that are selling barbecue supplies will Man, doing it this way, it looks like it might be a little bit easier to inject. You've only got half the distance to go to inject it. I can see advantages to doing it this way. I don't know what their port scores are like. I've, I've never really checked on them as far as their port scores. But, uh, Man, that's injecting good. So the rationale is when it, when it comes out, you'll have twice as much bark on your barbecue because you got twice as much surface area to receive rub.
Now I'm injecting through the fat cap because half the meat's gone. There's no injection where I'm injection coming from the other side because I cut it in half, which I don't like to inject through the fat cap. That makes it leak. But in this case, it's already cut in half anyway, so. Hey, Sweet Smoke Q, I like what he's doing there. That's some good stuff, man. All right. Now, let's come back with our butt, butt dust. I hope, it's, I hope it's not real salty, uh, but we're going to go ahead and do our fired and wired barbecue Boston butt root. Prep. Now, when we lay it on the cooker, we'll lay it back out like Fire and Wire does, but when we put it in the, uh, put it back in the uh, Ziploc bag, we'll just go ahead and fold it back up for now. I have to see how the money muscle turns out. It's not cut up or anything. See if it'll cook around like it does when it's uh, now you notice I'm setting it up and doing all the ends. The ends are just as important as the flat part. Got to get it all over the whole butt. Get more bark, as much bark as you can. Okay, let's put this one. Let's put this one away. Okay, now our last butt. I'll tell you what. I'm going to go ahead and pour the rest of this Sweet Smoke Q uh, injection into our last butt right here. Let's let him have that. I'm going to go ahead and go back and do another butcher. doesn't wash all the rub off. Let's go back and do another butcher. Okay, folks, I, I did not stack any flavors. I think uh, for research purposes on this video, I'm going to do each one separately. We did buzzed butt dust. We did simmer on dock, which was beautiful. Uh, now for this last one, Probably the best selling butt rub in the country. Let's go ahead and try a little Bad Byron's and see how it makes that Boston butt look. I know it makes it taste good. Uh, this is our last Boston butt, Smithfield. And uh, we're going to trim this one in the middle of the road. I'm going to take this out and gonna get back our Put your barbecue pork injection and uh, we're going to come back in here and put 
put three quarters of a cup. Three quarters of a cup of butcher barbecue pork injection. Oh, I see what he did. If you measure out your pork injection, three quarters of a cup, you can get one full bottle, which everybody has on site, of drinking water, 16 ounce bottle and pour it in there. Go ahead, put your barbecue. Man, that's got to make it easy on a team. All right, here's our butcher dipper that we've been using. Go ahead and start mixing it up. Last time it just took a second and all of a sudden it jumped and it was all mixed up, no problems. If I had one of those little wire whisk things, it would mix a lot faster. Now you want to trim your Boston butts while they're cold because the uh, fat will cut and the, and the membranes will cut and separate from the meat a whole lot easier when it's cold. When it gets warmer, it's a lot harder to handle. And uh, thank God it's nice and cool out here today because we've probably been sitting out here for 30 minutes shooting this, so I know you Boston butts have sit out for 30 minutes. Look at there. Look how easy. Shoot, homogeneous. Homogeneous mixture means it's all one consistent mix. This is not. This, it dissolves. All right. Now, for this one, we're going to go ahead and do a serious trim. Try and pay attention to detail. You know, for me, Notice I got the smaller knife. Uh, separating that money muscle is a good idea. I think you ought to do that. Just come in here like this and make sure you stay back because wherever you go down, that's where the money muscle is going to end. You can kind of see where it ends. I'm going to separate that money muscle right there. And then I'm going to come right in here. And I'm going to go ahead and get that fat off of there. It might cost me a little pork, but membranes is what you're up against any membrane you leave on there it's going to be a barrier to uh, barrier to your uh, injection but membranes all you want you don't want to go in here and get a whole bunch of the meat because the less meat you leave on there, the less amount you're going to be able to get that uh, rub on. But you need some fat on there in order to uh, add flavor. Fat is the number one thing that flavors, even over top of rubs. Uh, your pork during the cooking process. I'm going to throw that away. That's totally worthless.
Yeah, it's probably good enough. I don't want to totally destroy the structure of the meat. Let's go ahead and take some of the fat cap off. I love every barbecue team out there. I wouldn't be standing here doing this if it wasn't for you fellas. Big shout out to Ultimate Tailgazers BBQ, Jim Burt. Ultimate Tailgazers Monday night on BNTL. 7 o'clock Eastern on Blog Talk Radio. That's the Barbecue Superstars National Tailgate League. We hung out with him last night. And uh, this woman next to us had ordered a drink. I said, just bring one of those. <laughs> Chris and Kathy is what I call the Clark, but anyway, uh, was sitting there and uh, they brought out a half a gallon drink. <laughs> Chris had to end up having to help me drink. I had to drive home, but <laughs> if you're in Augusta, don't order one of those. Make sure you know what you're ordering because that was the biggest drink. <laughs> we always have a lot of fun with them. Chris Fulmer is a great guy. If you need insurance, uh, personal, uh, call Chris Fulmer. He's in Aiken, South Carolina. Just look him up on Facebook under Ultimate Tailgate of BBQ. He's got a great insurance company. I'll tell you, he's a trustworthy person, too. If he tells you something, that's the way it is. Jim Bird, Killer Bees, just won Southern Barbecue Network Team of the Year. Uh, he's a great guy good team to sponsor he's got a great big trailer got the ability to put your put your company out there in the barbecue world and these people that go to barbecue contests are definitely barbecue enthusiasts so if you got a barbecue product sponsor Jim Berg and Hugh represents you very well now I broke the fat cap by uh, taking some of it off I need to leave a little fat, you know, for flavor. But this one here, like the first one I did, I'm not going to have to fight taking the fat cap off too much. I'm going to leave that on because I don't want to mess up the money muscle. Okay. So now what we're going to do on this one, turn it over and at an angle. Barbecue Superstars would love to invite you to be on the Barbecue Superstars cooking channel. Just send us an email, bbqsuperstars at gmail.com, and let us know. We'll try to set it up. A barbecue competition this is the way I tell you you ought to do it if you hit it at an angle so you don't go through the bottom you see how it's staying in there real good this time which the other three ways wasn't wrong but if it starts running out all over the place put your finger on the hole when you pull out that in, uh, injector Try to infuse that meat as well as you can. That money muscle sure is a nice, solid piece of pork. It's almost like a loin, a center cut loin.
there's a little matrix for you right there. When you're cooking pork, the biggest thing you want to do is break down the collagen. And one way you can break down collagen is with ascorbic acid. Now, some people would inject some pineapple juice, but I'm trying to strictly see how these products do on their own. Boy, he's got some beautiful product here. That's, that's something else right there. Okay. Let's do a little championship setup here. Put your barbecue simmer on dot. No, I can't do that. I've done. I got. I'm gonna go ahead and do uh, butt rub. I tell you, that butcher right there with simmer on dock on it to me. Uh, I mean that's about as championship as you can get. That's awesome right there. But I'm gonna give uh, Byron's butt rub some play. Let's see. Let's see how it makes it look. This is a experiment time for all of us there's no reason why uh you know i get to do a little experimenting for you the you know, last time i used this it really comes out good Byron's butt rub does bad Byron's butt rub that's got good red looks like buzz's butt dust and Byron's butt rub look a lot alike doesn't mean the ingredients the same because what i'm smelling right now is totally different what i smell when i was putting uh Simmer on dock or buzz butt dust on it. That's good. Smells real good. Now notice, see, I lift it up, come down the side with it. See that money muscle right there. If I was going to do a barbecue competition, this is how I'd trim it course now we're getting ready to find out uh, we do all this cook and then at the end of the cook I'm gonna set all four Boston butts and identify which one's which and then we'll see you know direct proof this is what it is now I'm going to cook these at 275 for 8 hours. I think the more you trim it, the less you got to cook it. That one Boston butt I didn't trim at all, uh, I'm probably going to have to have to watch that one, make sure I get it done. 185 internal temperature for chopped pork, 195 internal temperature for pulled pork. Uh, pulled pork will fall apart completely. Chopped pork, uh, you know, it, sticks together a little more I tell you for me and a lot of the big time cooks I've seen uh, as far as I'm concerned you really need to make it all fall apart you don't want any pork you gotta get that dag on Frederick Dick uh, cleaver and sit there and beat it you know you don't want to have to do that if you got to sit there and beat the hell out of it then you haven't got it done it's not done Keep that in mind. All right, bad Byron's. No. Put it in our container. Ziploc bags. You get these at Lowe's Home Improvement. I can make a big shout out to Cambro. We'll be using that in the process of cooking these butts. Uh, Cambro. It's the absolute best container.
for holding the food, holding your pork. And it's, it's a step in the process. You gotta let them rest, let them rest in the cam, bro. You can't do any better than that. Okay, folks. We're gonna put on our barbecue superstar's hat and take us a little shot of Jack. And we're gonna rest up and take it easy for a few minutes. All right, folks, what we're gonna try to demonstrate to you is uh, how to light charcoal with a chimney. And I tell you, it's the best way to do it with some newspaper or some paper uh, because it keeps the chemicals out of it. Now, you could light it with paper for demonstration purposes and then get the lighter fluid and put lighter fluid all over it and then nobody never, they never know it. Uh, no, don't use lighter fluid, folks. Now, I got this just to let you know. It puts a taste in your meat. Makes your meat taste bad. Don't use it. All right, now, in feed bags for cows and pigs and stuff, there's a way of pulling this string. It's the same for charcoal, where you can undo. There it is. My God, I figured it out. <laughs> I started to say I can't ever figure it out, but I just did it. That's crazy. Now, we're using Kindle. We'd rather use another brand, but we don't have a sponsorship, so guess what? We're using Kindle. I've already got some paper up under my, uh, I'm gonna put this under there too, a little more paper, and uh, we're gonna dump us some charcoal. Fill it up, we're cooking Boston butts, we're gonna need at least two bags. It's an eight hour cook on an offset. Maple Creek makes a great, great grill. We're gonna be going over the Maple Creek here in just a little bit. But first, we gotta get us some charcoal lit and ready to go. Now, the thing about Barbecue Superstar Matches is it's got a little yellow tip on it that's the same color as my star. Our star, our Barbecue Superstar. See that little, that little tip right there? That is, uh, that's your star. That's Barbecue Superstars. Yeah, we're going to, now they long, see, they'll go up in there where their paper's at and light it very quickly. When you use a Barbecue Superstar match, you ain't got to use but one because they work good. That matches with born and made for barbecue. Now look at our chimney right here. It's already started smoking. We'll let it sit there a few minutes and get burning. And uh, come on, honey, they'll never know it. They'll never, they'll never see me. They'll never. They, whoa, whoa, whoa! Nah, we can't use it. Can't use it. No, it makes a bad taste of your meat. We're doing a bunch of product surveys here. I'm not going to alter or mess that meat up on any of these people who sent me stuff. Okay, folks, the way the Meadow Creek. Okay, folks, the way the Meadow Creek decided to do their uh, grills as far as doing direct grill and offset is really neat. Uh, they put a big pan, it's really heavy built, in the bottom of the grill. Put charcoal in here and do your direct grilling. You take it out and you do your offset smoking. So it's a really neat feature of the Meadow Creek grill. The way the grate sets in there. Boy, this one here, you don't have any problem getting the grate out to cook, uh, clean it. You know, shoot, grab that sucker up. Run out and look at there, and the wires are good and far apart so you can get to them, clean them up. Really heavy construction. That thing there weighs at least 20 pounds. And then the, the third thing that I really like is you're not going through a hole. I mean, you open this thing up, you have 100% access to everything that's on the grill. Now, you can buy another accessory, folks, another table that sits up top here, and you have two-level cooking. Uh, really heavy built, good too. About a hundred and twenty dollar add-on. Uh, Meadow Creek's got a good situation going here. Now you'll notice you have a stopcock right here. 
need to put a bucket under that because as the barbecue uh, gets to draining, uh, it'll get on your patio. Okay, folks, we got our charcoal burning pretty doggone good. I tell you, I really like all these latches that the Meadow Creek has. Good, strong. And there's your ass pan. I'm going to leave that moving around so you can see it. Got a real good burn pan in it, really sturdy. I'm going to take this charcoal in our... <coughs> this is a Weber. A Weber chimney we got here. Dump all this in there. And uh, see how long it takes for Kindle to get it up to temperature. Now, the way to control your temperature is through the vent. We're going to open it way up right now. Get plenty of air going through there. Boy, look at that smoke. The Kindle inside the grill. Look at that beautiful smoke coming right up through the cooker that quick. Uh, I think this Meadow Creek gonna work out pretty good. Okay, remember I always remember I told you that the more wood you put in your cook, the blacker the barbecue gets, or the darker the barbecue gets. Not necessarily black, but it'll get darker. So. Steve Overlay said he always just put one stick in. We've got some well-seasoned oak right there. And I'm going to stick one stick right in there. That's all I'm probably going to put in there, too. Okay, we are back. And uh, it's been four hours. Butcher's been soaking in the, uh, in the marinade. So we're going to put... Cimarron Dock. Now this is big time competition here. Butcher Barbecue Cimarron Dock's on the same butt. But I'll tell you what. If I had some smoking guns, I'd put it on there too, but let's try and do some big time barbecue comp. Now this is Cimarron Dock Gourmet. Gourmet flavor. And that came straight out of uh, the fellow who makes Cimarron's mouth, uh, Cimarron Dock's mouth. Uh, 30 minutes prior he said put the gourmet on there and do not put the other Cimarron dock on the butt so we're gonna put the gourmet on here and then we're gonna let it sit for 30 minutes and then we can go ahead and put it on the grill boy that smells good yeah, that's a nice rub right there. And this is the one I did the uh, the biggest uh, trim on, too. I tried to get all the membranes out of the middle of it. So, I've got one that's plain Cimarron dock, so I might go ahead and layer some flavors on this one. Uh, let's get some buzzed butt dust. Put it on here. Let's get some let's get some major bark going on this one. And see what it, see what's gonna look like. Let's get some Buzz's butt dust. I mean, uh, Bad Byron's butt rub. Let's put a layer of that on there. We're going to put some major rub on this thing. We're going to get some bark going. Big time bark. It's like Myron said, you don't like bark? Yeah, let that set for 30 minutes. Let's see what we got. Let's 
I'll sit there and sweat. Looks like our Meadow Creek is rolling right along with that beautiful smoke coming out of there. You know it's going to make a heck of a smoke ring on these Boston butts. Meadow Creek ready to roll on these Boston butts. Looks like GC smoke. Boy, is it beautiful. What a color on this thing. This is pure Cimarron dock, folks. Wow. Boy, look at that red flavor. You know, that one there, so red, it almost makes that one look brown. Uh, it's still a little bit red, but Cimarron dock will look. Middle one look brown. And uh, boy, you can tell the difference in the color. Now, uh, the one on either side has Cimarron dock combination on it, and the one in the middle has Bad Byron's butt rub. Now, the one we're going to put up on the very end down here is going to have buzzing butt dust, and it looks a little brown too. Of course, Cimarron dock is just so beautiful red, and that's what you want barbecue to look like. The Cimarron dock is. Uh loaded down with uh, Sweet Q, Sweet Q smoke. We're going to put one more on here. We're going to tighten it up a little bit. Yeah, put out. <laughs> put it out pretty heavy, but what's some good smoke coming through there? Kindle ain't bad. That ain't no bad charcoal. Got some good smoke to it. Okay, got room for our last one. Now, as you can see, left to right, I did my best barbecue competition trim to the one on the left, far left. It's got the, the first one I put on. Then I did the extreme trim to the second one. I took all the membranes off that one with the big knife. And then the third one is no trim at all. And now... We fixing to go with fired and wired trim. We're gonna open it up just like they do. And there we go. There it is. That's a hell of a lineup. Bad Byron's buzzes butt dust Cimarron dock. Bad Byron's Cimarron dock. Buzz's butt dust. These three are just one rub. Bad Barmers is a little brown. 
Uh, butt rub's getting kind of red. Cimarron Dot's got a beautiful red color, so it makes a beautiful bark. Uh, I might just go ahead and hit it just a little bit, like quick. It's just a little more bad bombing right on the grill. It ain't gonna hurt nothing. Get a little buzz of butt dust and put on here. And get some simmer on dock. Put it on here just because it's sitting in marinade. It might wash some of it off once we glue on top. All right, folks. Some great sizzle going on here. Coming up to temperature. If you want to appear on the Barbecue Superstars Cooking Channel, all you got to do is email me at bbqsuperstars at gmail.com and let's set a time and a date. Now, I haven't got a whole lot of money to help you get here, but bring your cookers and all you got to do is get here and we'll make a huge television show with your cookers, your smokers, and whatever you want to cook right here. All right, our temperature is getting up there at 275. That's exactly where we want it. So we're going to go down here. We're going to cut the cut the vent off. I'm going to start off cutting it off all the way, and then we'll watch our temperature fluctuates and come back and open up as we need. Okay, our temperature gauge is dropping, so I'm going to have to open it up a little bit more. Okay, our temperature gauge is stabilized. We needed to go up just a little bit more, so I'm opening it just a little bit more. I've opened up the valve a little bit more. Now the thermometer's going back up, so it does work. It was dropped just a little bit below 250. Now it's come back up to 250. Let's see if it continues to go up. Back up about to our 275 mark. Okay, we're going to go in and get our Maverick. Okay, Maverick sent me a device. Uh, it's a uh, ready check and it's got a remote transmitter on it. And I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, it'll tell me the temperature in the food for the temperature in the pit at any given moment. It's got a button right there. This one here is for the pit, and this one here is for the food. I push it, and it automatically tells me the temperature. And it's got a night light mode. There's a light. Turn it on, turn it off. I don't want to waste the battery. And there's your on and off button. And uh, man, how about that? So I'm gonna sit in here and watch TV for three or four hours while uh, our Boston butts are cooking. Boy, these things are really cooking good. Now, if you look at the difference between the two probes right here, this one's definitely in the pit, and this one's the probe to go inside the Boston butt. So uh, we're going to come in this one. I didn't trim that much, but this is the biggest one. And I'm going to stick this probe 
all the way in this thing as far as I can. All right, and then I think we're going to just lay this one in right there in the pit. I'm going to hang it right here. I'm going to hang it over here. Kind of hanging over. There you go. Now I got one in the meat. I don't want the meat touching. And I got one in the pit. I'm not going to slam it too hard. I'm going to cut it. It's 163, it's coming back up to temp. Look, there's our well, we'll hang that right there, and we'll let this thing come back up to temp. BBQ Superstars would love to have you as a member. Just go to bbqsuperstars.com and sign up for a membership today. Time to do just a little hell yeah barbecue. That's the combination Boston butt and, and that's the bad virus butt rub. Boston butt and that's the Cimarron Dock. Got the probe in it. That's straight Cimarron Dock. And there's a Buzz's butt dust on the end of the line there. They're all rocking and rolling. It's going to be some good barbecue. Get your place ready, folks. We're getting ready to eat it up. Hell yeah. Okay, I just figured out how to sync the transmitter to the receiver. And there's our temperatures right there. That's what's currently going on in our Meadow Craig grill. I had to turn it on. I had to turn it off and hit the sync button then turn it back on and when I did that it synced up and uh, now I've got got my temperatures well as expected uh, with an offset you know we're having to put charcoal in about every hour the temperature slowly starting to drop now so I'm gonna go ahead and put two handfuls in here man I've got a heck of a good bit of good bit of cold build up there We're building that smoke ring. I guess we probably already have. I said the smoke ring's built in 20 minutes. First 20 minutes. We're gonna leave it. We're gonna leave it in there for four hours. So uh, <clears throat> so uh, we'll be able to do the next step in four hours which is another two hours 430 today we put it in at 1230 we're going to do the next step at 430 uh, and then we'll wrap them all right folks we are about two hours in and our maverick temperature gauge is really working good we got one in the pit as you see right here and we got one in this piece of meat and the temperature has been uh, progressively rise it was 86 degrees about an hour and a half ago and now it's 109 degrees in about an hour and 30 minutes we're going to go to a temperature in all four of them to have 195 degrees uh, but boy look at the beautiful now this is Buzz's butt dust Cimarron dock Bad Byron's butt rub and this is a combination of all three of them and uh, I can't say which one looks the best I think they all look I don't know they're all beautiful I don't know what to say but Okay, we'll come back and check in just a minute. Okay, uh, we're going to go ahead and move our butts into the second phase, which I'm going to wrap them. And they look like they're doing pretty well. Uh, PK's got a three-palm pitchfork that he gets his 
butts off with. I like using this uh, spatula. It's just because that's what I happen to buy. And we're going to get this thing off right quick. So what we're going to do is we're going to set it on two pieces of tin foil. I just hope I have enough. We're going to do double so in case it, the bottom one gets busted, the top one will still uh, still hold the fluid in because it's going to get full of juice. And uh, I'm going to pick up this butt. Set it over here on the tin foil. And then we're going to close the lid. And I'm going to come back and wrap it. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, when you wrap your butt, what you want to do with a tinfoil is hike it up and make it into a bowl. And this tinfoil here acts like it's a little thin. They got different different grades of uh, tinfoil. And what we're going to do is we're going to get our agave nectar. Creek has full line concession trailers, competition trailers, whatever kind of barbecue you want to cook, you can buy this mega trailer from Meadow Creek. Now what we're going to do is get our agave nectar. Yeah, that stuff's like honey. And dump about half or three quarters of it in there out of one bowl. Then we'll get our dull pineapple juice. Dump about that much of that in there. Now we're going to get our apple juice. Dump that in there. Now this is the one that we mixed all three rubs on, so we're going to put just a little. Put us just a little more rub on the top of it, all three, yeah, it's empty, okay, let's see, oh, I took it in, oh, there it is, Okay, we're going to get a bowl, and then we're going to get one piece to put on top. make a vent.
Now you got yourself a little oven. This has a little added insurance because I believe the tinfoil I got kind of thin. I'm going to go ahead and set it in this little pan right here. Let it cook in there. Yeah, because this just don't got... Well, I think what it is, I got it. I might have too much in it. But, but the way the way this uh, tinfoil thing works, uh, it'll hold it right up against the meat, and that's what the winning combination is. Okay, so now we got the the first one done. This here's the bad Byron butt rub. Uh, frosted butt. You know, caramelized the same. They started off different colors, but now they've all turned into the same exact color, and that color is hell yeah good. Nah, mine don't work as good as Brad's does. Because the Boston butt's kind of long. Make a bowl once again. Let's get the rest of this first bottle of aguave nectar. Put it all down on here. Get another one. Pineapple juice. This is the one that's making it run out. There you go, some apple juice. Now we'll get us another coat of bad Byron's and put on there. For all you pro teams out there, you probably can't learn much from what I'm doing here, but you might be able to watch this video and pick something out and be like, oh, okay, I didn't think about that. Uh, so I hope I can help you that much. One. Two. Just a few gold nuggets is what makes a difference in barbecue competition. Okay, get this pan right here. There 
There's number two. Okay, folks, now watch this. We'll take our probe out of this one. Been in there for so long. Put it right over in, in this one. I made a hole in this one. There you go. Now we use that one to measure with. Okay. Let me get this one. Ooh, that butt's cooking good. Ooh, slid right up under there. That's a that's the butt I didn't trim at all. It it hangs together better. I like the way it hangs together. Just then that was pretty good. one up oh look at there the fat cap fat cap came off on it oh look at there yeah that's a little fat cap on it now yeah, it's not trimmed it's got all the fat cap and everything on it so uh, it's going to be a little harder to wrap because it's going to take more tin foil, but got some beautiful bark on it. Be interesting to see how this one fares compared to the ones we trimmed. It looks good, that's for sure. It looks, if the appearance was the only thing, she'd be a dead winner, that's for sure. Okay, we're going to do our guava nectar on this one. Pineapple. I'm going to put us a little apple juice on it. This is the one with Cimarron Dock on it, so we're going to put us a little coat more Cimarron Dock on it. insurance that I won't bust out the bottom and all that juice go running all over the grill all throughout the new Meadow Creek. Okay, last but not least now, I did see that they uh, had theirs on a pan in order to handle it. Uh, fired and wired when they were doing there, so it's got a lot of bark on it. I give you credit for that. That's a 
slice it along situation there. I have to see what I can do about keeping my spatula under it so I can get it over there to the uh, table. Get my work on it. Oh yeah, I got it. Uh, I think I got it. <laughs> I say I got it. I might not have shit. Okay, we'll do our bowl situation on here. Right quick. Get in here longer. And then it's doing this one's a little bit harder. Guava nectar. It has got more surface area on it than the other ones did. Buzzing butt dust for this little pineapple juice in there. Put us a little apple juice in there. Well, I haven't got another small pan, and this is long anyway. I'm gonna put this in a long pan and uh, you hear that little thing beeping there? That's the Maverick warning me that I'm, I'm too low a temperature in the cooker. Of course I got the lid up because I'm I'm wrapping them all. Cook these for another four hours at 275, and we're gonna take them out and sauce them. Stack it up like that. Uh, hopefully, the little shut. We're fixing to test that out right now. Could actually pull it off this way a little bit. We'll center it up. Center it up and shift. Okay, here we go. Yeah, yeah, she held it off. All right, that's step number two, folks, on our Meadow Creek cooker. Okay, I think we're experiencing the stall. Uh, I've got the same amount of charcoal and the same amount of stuff in the in the box, and we're down to what it says there is 175, but on here it says 225. And the meat's still climbing at 149. So I believe we're in the stall. It's been five hours since we started cooking. Took them out of four and rewrapped. 
it got up to about 300 for some reason and now it's dropped down to 225 how about that it's smoking like crazy the fire's going good we are in the stall all right folks it is saturday morning sunday morning uh, we cooked them all night <clears throat> i like to make sure meat's done you look on our uh computerized maverick it kept me abased of what it was all night and uh i came out and added wood when i had to and did what i had to and right now it says it's 194 and uh the pit's 266. we're really looking for one more degree 195. i want to open this thing up all the way i'm gonna open up the top part of it and uh let's see if i open it up the top part if uh, i can get a degree see the temperature on the pit starts going up this segment right here is going to take about eight more minutes uh, so if you don't want to sit there and watch the whole thing uh, you can fast forward but just just for demonstration purposes I'm gonna keep it all in here the bottom numbers going up which the pits getting hotter and so let's see how long it takes to get one more degree in a butt Trying to get one degree on the top, 194 to 195. I opened the two vents, 288. You can get that in the 194 to turn into 195. 291. Ninety-seven. Well, it's going to shoot up to 300 degrees just because I opened all the vents up. Got the air flowing. That's the same thing the barbecue guru does. I just did it by opening the vents. Three hundred. We're just looking for one degree on the butt. Demonstration of the Maverick Ready Check. You know what? It's got perfect temperature and it's being transmitted. That is not connected. I can go in the house and sit down and it's got perfect temperature reporting every degree of the pit, every degree of the butt. We're going to put them in the camera and hold them. 309. Come on now, that butt ought to go up one degree. 311. Three thirteen. One degree, that's all we want.
316. Ah, jump two. There we go. How long did that take? I don't know. Jump two degrees. We're going to pull 195. That's 196. How about that? We just demonstrated. <laughs> and all I did was open the vents. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the... Uh, I open that up completely, and as you see, I slid that back and it's open completely. That's all I did. Took five minutes, five minutes and twenty seconds. Okay, now we're going. We're going to take the temperature of some of these butts right here. Sixty degrees out here right now. Wow, look at there. Smoked. Now, yeah, this is 196 on the electronic machine that we. One seventy four. Okay, here's where our probe is at. Let's see what it says. One ninety five. One seventy two. One eighty one. Alright, this one underneath this one. Oh, two hundred and ten. Two hundred and nine. Wow, this in here is mega done. Wow. Okay, so we got some variation in the pit. Uh we went a little bit high with this one on top, and it says one seventy. I think I might need to take a test look and see if it's done. Looks like it's done. Huh. Okay, we'll set this one off. Let me get low. So that shows you the differences. I stacked it on top and didn't quite get it done. That's the ones. Now this one that was in the center is 200 and some degrees. That's what I'm going to really done. We're going to put this in the pan, bro. We got three of them to put in here. That shit. <clears throat> I'll take this one out. Take the probe out. Set it right there. We'll put this in that can, bro. This one right here, and we're gonna crank up that heat. I'll go ahead and put this probe in here. Put this back down. We're gonna crank it up. We still got another hour, so we'll uh, put some wood on. We'll crank this thing up for an hour. It's already at 170. Okay, the meat's at 183. It's only 11. It's only 11 degrees off. So uh, we'll crank it up and get it up to 195. 
Man, now folks, emergency, emergency. I opened it all up, the, the pit flew up to 415 degrees and the butt 214 degrees. So I guess that means our butt is done. Emergency, emergency. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it off, put it in the can, bro. Meadow Creek, Meadow Creek rocks, man. Whoa. <laughs> Oh, well, these butts are good and hot now. It's a four-alarm fire. We're going to go ahead and open it up. 400-degree oven. Close this down. Close this down. Man, now let's stick it in there and see what it is. Seventy-two. Let's see what this one is. Boy, is that one done? Yeah, one ninety-five. That one's good. And I got some water boiling over here. I have to rearrange our camera a little bit. Get the fourth one in there. Ah, that's full of juice. I don't want to get juice all in this thing. Here you go, Molly. Look at this big one. I know you like that stuff. Right, Dale. How about that? It's a perfect fan size. Crazy, man. I didn't know that. that big one oh -ho. yeah how about that one let's see if we can get that big pan in here now we'll take our probes out This one in here. How about that? This was not pre planned, folks. That's up. Pull this one out. Set this one right here. Now we've got all four of our Boston butts in the can, bro. Sure do. I was really worried about how it's going to get them all in there, but there it is. And they're all. Okay, here we go. Let's see what it looks like. All right, here we go. I haven't looked at it either. I don't have any idea what this Boston butt looks like right here. 
I uh, hope it's really good and done. We're going to see for a minute. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, boy, that came out good. This is the buzz's butt dust. But, well, let's do the test. Hey, 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 look at that. Yeah. I love meat when it's done. Wow, what y'all think about that? Buzz is butt dust. Uh, shoot, I don't really need to chop it. But, uh, yeah, heck, let's try and, try and make a little box. Let's see if we can get a, a little competition box going here. It ain't gonna hurt nothing. Uh, Right here's the money muscle. I'm not gonna use two or three butts to make this box. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just use one. Yeah, there it is. Look at that money muscle. Man, that thing's beautiful. Buzz's butt does did a great job on that thing. Okay, let's see if we can find a couple eyes in here. I know it's gonna be hot. But, uh, there's an eye. I can pull that eye out right there. Hell, pulling that eye out is harder than I thought. Here's an eye. Eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Hell, that's chopped there. Knife's not sharp enough. Hell, you need an electric knife. You do need an electric knife. God, you're Shit. This butt didn't have very good money muscle on it. Sure didn't. Yeah, that's really chopped up enough. I don't have to get too rough with it. Man, it made some really nice bark. Look at the bark. Oh, look at that beautiful piece, man. We'll put that in there. Ain't much of a competition box. <laughs> put that one in there. Here's a substantial difference in taste in the intern of the butt. Of the butt. Uh, Butcher Barbecue did an excellent job of changing the internal taste. Well, as soon as you chop it, you really got to eat it. So we're we going to. I ain't got to chop shit. Yeah, we'll just pull this stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, that's a fat cat. I hate, to, I hate to lose all that bark. We're gonna lay that in there. Somebody might want to eat that anyway. Can I get a little pulled pork with that? Look at there. That's 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 the fat cat, but. Man. Mm. Oh my God. Buzz's butt buzz did a good job. Mm. 
Okay, there's buzzing butt dust. All right, here comes sample number one. Now, this one here I did, uh, Fired wild, fired and wired style out of uh, uh, Florida, and I'm taking it out of our Cambro. I don't know how well this one came out as far as being done. That's the same size tray in it right there. Okay. Yeah, boy, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. It's not that hot. I don't guess I really need gloves. Now, now we're gonna take this out, and I hate to get it all over, but I can't help it. No, I got it. It's ain't green, isn't it? What I might do is just go ahead and try and take the boss of butt out, but shoot, it's gonna fall apart. That thing is done, brother. Oh, this one ain't quite as done as the other ones was. I tried it tried a different style. Let's just do this. Whoa! Whoo, that thing's hot. <laughs> there you go, kitty, kitty, kill yourself. Oh, she probably will. Okay, uh, this here's the fired and wired one. Uh, I put, uh, let's see, what, what rub did I put on this? Uh, bar, bad Byron's butt rub. So that, that right there is what a butt would look like with bad Byron's butt rub. <laughs> No, I put buzz and butt dust on it. That's what it is. Okay, so we put uh, sweet smoke Q on it, and we put buzz's butt dust, and this is the result right here. And that's a little browner. Uh, Cimarron Doc made it a little redder. Uh, this is a little browner, but what y'all think? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. 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 Good. Yeah. Smells good. Smells good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's see. We'll chop a little bit up. Now, we're gonna do three of these, so I don't really want you to tell me which one you like the best to start off with. I just want you to take each of you take a sample, all five of you, and then, uh, uh, here, Richard, no, it's not, just leave it right there and grab out of that plate. You want me to get these out? Uh, yeah, everybody get a napkin, there you go. Shoot barbecues for eating with your hands. So just go ahead and jump in there and eat some with your hands. What you want to do? Just get out of the, any one of them? Yeah, any one of them. It's all the same flavoring on it. Any one. Oh, I thought. Folks, I'm going to tell you my own personal preference, fired and wired. Uh, way of, of cooking a Boston, but I don't like it. It didn't, it didn't cook as good. You know, it might have been my fault, but I, I didn't like it. Uh, but still, it looks pretty good. Looks good. Did you get you some there, uh, Ronnie? Yeah, I got me a piece. Okay. Right, okay, now, uh, Walter, if I can trust you now, I'm gonna put all this barbecue in that uh, I'm gonna put all this in that pan and if you would carry it in the kitchen, that's what they're gonna be eating for lunch. Just make sure some of it gets to the kitchen. <laughs> it will, you know that, but you know you still should go. Okay. There's number one. Did everybody, all five of you, get a taste of number one? Mm -hmm. Okay, there's number one. Let me empty out our trays because we come up with number two. Now, there's 
The next one's got Cimarron dock on it, and it is so good, it's almost crazy unbelievable, man. Are you want to take it in like that? Yeah. I think I can just grab it with my hands. Yeah. Let me make sure I got a good picture out of it. Yeah. That's how you make uh, chop out of a Boston butt like that? Yep. This little job right here does the second half of it. Wow, now this one here is the Cimarron dock. Now, Cimarron dock, let me change up the... I use Cimarron dock and... Uh, um, they, they sent it to me from Texas, I mean from uh, Oklahoma. This stuff right here. You can't get it in the store anywhere. Yeah. We use Butcher Barbecue and Cimarron Doc. You're getting ready to see me lay it out right here. Oh, well, she already did. Look how red it is. Mm. Yeah. I believe this is the one I didn't trim at all. So now we're going to see how doing it without trimming it at all does. Man, that's a big old Boston butt. Now that's a big Boston butt. I'll tell you what, it's done too, brother. You just kind of fire it when you pull it. <laughs> I cooked it 300 degrees for about eight hours. Then I cooked it uh, probably 220 overnight just to hold it. And then, wow, look at them. Look at them eyes. Mm. Man, that's, uh-oh. Hey, kitty. <laughs> she, she getting ready to get loaded down over here. I just throw all that out. All right. Now, what do y'all think about the appearance? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think this might look a little better than that other one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is about to be close when you get it. Mm. Damn, I need to take a picture. Can I take a picture? Yeah, would you take a picture and uh, send it to my phone? Sure. Okay. Folks, I didn't take a picture of the uh, one that was filleted out because I just didn't feel like it. it. It didn't work. I don't like it. I won't do that again. All right, folks, here's number two now. We're going to need your decision. Whoo, look at that. That some gun is done, brother. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, smell that Cimarron dock. I can smell it. Man, you know, Cimarron dock is, Yeah. it's just a, it's a heavy spice, man. Let's go this way with it now. All right, eat you, eat you whatever you want there. See what you think. Oh, it's hot. You want a bite? Yeah, put an extra uh, thousand thousand on the computer, okay? Okay, I will. Mm, that's sweet. Mm, that's a little bit sweet? Mm -hmm. What do you think? I love it. It's good. Yeah, it tastes like beef jerky. Tastes like beef jerky to you? Yeah. Mm. Whoa, look at that bone falling out of there. Man, that thing did good. The other one better. Oh, you like the smoky taste of the mm -hmm. other one better? You do? Okay. Mm -hmm. But I like the spicy one. So Cimarron Dock is a little more spicy, and uh, the other one is a little more. Uh, little yeah, yeah. Here. Put that thousand thousand on okay? Get some bark on there. That's mm -hmm. sweeter than time. All right. So far between the two. Which one did you, which which one did you like better? Oh, this number one. two. Uh, number two. I like the taste of two. Two. Okay. Yeah, it's got a good taste to it. Oh, um, yeah. Man, that was easy to chop up. My goodness. <laughs> Here, fellas. Here, let me get you a real good piece on it. That's a major bark there. All right. Run that on in. That's number two in the books. Hmm. That bar's good, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. I forgot. Yeah, here you go. We'll dump this out because we're getting ready to come with number two. Or number three. Okay, the last one on the books is Bad Bomber's Butt Rub. Uh, I want you all to check the appearance out. I'm coming out of the Cambro with it. And uh, 
be interested to see how bad Byron fares with our five judges right here. Uh, see, it's a little browner. Uh, bad Byron's is brown. Uh, a little browner. Still got some red to it, but it's got nice bark. It's a good, nice bark, uh, dark bark. I uh, used I used quite a bit of wood to keep it uh, warm all night. Now. I took the money muscle and separated it out a little bit and it looks like it paid off dividends on this butt because I'm going to be able to get to the money muscle really well. And uh, boy, thank God for this cleaver. I just use it for everything. Ah, shoot, it fell apart. Oh, the money muscle fell off. That's good. I'm not going to have to fight with it. Boy, I tell you what, that Meadow Creek uh, cooker I used really did a good job. Look at that. Whoa, man, look at that. That's beautiful. Bar uh, beautiful barbecue that's a barbecue superstar as hell yeah oh lord okay i'll get it uh oh a little bit for the chef All right, folks, I'll tell you what now. I don't know what went different on the cook on this one, but some great loin. Uh, but has a bunch of eyes in it. But boy, 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 look at that money muscle. That's the best part. We're going to get this knife right over here. It might be a little overdone, so it's hard for me to cook, cut. But I want to try to give everybody a piece of the money muscle. My knife might not be sharp, sharp enough, but... Eat that. Eat a piece of that. Eat a little bit. Here you go. Man. There you go. It's a little bit hot. Let me lay it right there for you. There's a piece for you. Good smoke ring. A little bit. I don't want a whole lot. That Meadow Creek put a heck of a smoke ring in that yeah. thing. Is there any way you take me a picture of this one right quick? Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't give you none. Wait a minute. That's good. Good barbecue. Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, third pan. I think number two should be number one. This tastes better than this one. Yeah, I think number three should be number one. <laughs> this one here is bad barbering. Man, did it fall apart and done. Folks, you know, I'm not doing competition this week, and I, the main thing I was wanting is to make sure that it's all good and done. And, uh, what do you think, Elaine? Is it good and done? Mm -hmm. I like this one out of all of them. You like the third one? I do too. Yeah, it's like snappy and has this mm -hmm. flavor. It ain't, it ain't as good as that sweet baby ring. I like number two. I mean, uh, I mean where am I going to do? Okay, let's take, it a, let's take an official vote. I think everybody's ate enough to decide now. Uh, who likes number one the best? Buzz Bud does. Nobody? <laughs> all right, number two, Cimarron Doc. We got two over here. And then number three, uh-oh, right there it is. All right, Bad Byron Butt Rub wins over Cimarron Doc. And uh, uh, shit, we appreciate everybody's participation. Now, um, uh, I will warn you, uh, you can't eat till your stomach explodes, so. Uh, <laughs> no, go ahead, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I tell you what, it's addicting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's good. good on that. I can see why it Look at this. That's real good, though. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We'd like to thank all our wonderful sponsors, Sweet Smoke Q, Butcher Barbecue, Cimarron Dock. Man, I tell you, a lot of great people. Buzz and Butt Dust, Smoking Coals, Meadow Creek Grills. Thank you for supplying us with a grill. There they all are. Thank you to all our wonderful sponsors, and I hope you learned something. And Barbecue Superstars loves you.